Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And this is going to be one in a series of tutorials in which I'll be presenting ideas to you that are still in development, but not yet fully realized. And that's very much the case with this one. It's certainly not meant to be a photorealistic scene at this point, but I think there's quite a bit of potential in the idea. For example, for a title sequence or a heads up display or something like that. At any rate, I hope there's enough in here that you'll find useful. So let's make a start. So let's just check out our project setup. 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second, and I've chosen a duration of 30 seconds. So the first thing we're gonna do is to grab the clouds and bring that in. So let's come over to the inspector. We're using this as a map for our terrain, so we obviously don't want any speed. So let's reduce that down to zero. Then what we're going to do is add a whole bunch of filters to this. So first of all, we're going to come to color threshold. I'm going to set that smoothness down to zero. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add stylize line art. And I think you can see where we're going with this. That's already started to give us these contour lines. So for this line art, I want to swap these two colors. So the paper color and the ink color. So the paper color, I want to be black and the ink color, I want to be white. So now we've got it reversed. And on top of that, I'm going to add another color threshold. And I'm going to set its value to 0.25 and its smoothness down to zero. Next, I'm going to add stylize uh, min max, and I'm going to switch the mode to maximum, and I'm going to increase the radius to one. That just gives us a fatter, uh, bolder outline. At the moment, our alpha channel is solid, uh, but what I'm going to do is simply add, after this, a color channel mixer, and we're going to come down here and just turn this into a luma here. So set the alpha alpha to zero and the other three values to one. And now if we look at the alpha channel, well, you can't see, but the alpha channel is the same as the color. So we've got white outlines. And finally, I just want to add a color colorize. And I'm going to pick brown and Let's make it really desaturated, something like that. Uh, so we're basically set up now with our basic contour generator. But there's one more thing I need to do, and that's come down to the initial threshold. And I'm going to come to the first frame, and I'm going to keyframe that threshold value and set it down to zero. And then I'm going to come forward to 15 seconds on the timeline. It's a little bit arbitrary, but that's the figure I've chosen and set it all the way up to one. And so now you can see we've got this um, outline animation, and this is what we're going to use for the basis of our project. So we can't use this directly. So what we're going to have to do is to make a clone of it. So right click, make clone layer. And then we're going to use the clone to create a replicator. So object replicate. And I'm going to drag this replicator out into a new group and turn the original group off. So let's set up the replicator. I'm going to choose line as the shape. Let's zero out those two values there, the X values. And let's turn on the 3D button. So then what we're going to do is we're going to open up the end point and we're going to increase the Y endpoint to 200. And then we're going to come down and open up the angle and we're going to set the X angle to negative 90. And we're going to set the number of points to 30. What we also need to do though is we need to come down and turn off the play frames option. And we also need to adjust this source frame offset and I'm going to go for 15. And now I think you can see, hopefully, that we've got the beginnings of our terrain there. Let's just add a camera so we can start to get a proper feel for it. So let's switch to 3D. First of all, I'm going to set the camera's angle of view to 90 so we get a nice wide angle lens effect. 
And then I'm going to come over to its position. Let's open that up. I'm going to set the starting Y value to negative 100 and the Z to negative 400. And then I'm going to add some behaviors. So I'm going to add camera sweep, camera dolly, and another sweep. And this third sweep, second sweep rather, I'm going to switch to tilt. This X tilt, I'm going to set the start to negative 10 and the end to negative 30. I'm going to come down to the distance and set that to negative 625, sorry, the dolly, I should say. And this Y sweep will set to start at negative 15 and end at positive 15. So there we go, we've got our camera move. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate the height of the terrain so we end up at this position here. So we can do that by coming into the replicator. Which I should have zeroed that up, I don't know why it's not at zero. Uh, let's come into the replicator and let's keyframe that Y position. So we're at 25 seconds on the timeline. We're going to keyframe the Y position, Y endpoint, I should say there, at 200. And we're going to come to the beginning and keyframe it down to zero. And now we get this growing terrain like so. The other thing I want to do is I want to come back down into that line art and make an adjustment to this mix value. And you can see, as I do so, it we get, get a different result. The figure that I want here for that mix value is 75, and I get a good blend of the lines and the actual terrain like so. Then I want to come into the clouds generator and open up the gradient and make a little bit of a tweak here. I'm going to take that black value, so click on that and set its location to 40%. And then I also want to click on that middle tab there, the little up, up arrow, and I'm going to set that middle value to 15. And what that gives us is it gives us sort of these open areas here where I can put some, some water in. So let's do that now. Let's, I'm going to close up that group. So let's come over to the library. And we'll look for color solid and we'll drag that into a new group at the bottom there. And I want to set the width and height to be 2000 by 2000. And that's actually something I should have done as well with my original clouds. That was uh, something I forgot to do because I basically want this to be square. So 2000 by 2000 on that clouds generator. So I'm going to come back into my color solid there. And I'm also going to apply a circle mask. And I'm just going to draw it roughly like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to center it up and come into the mask, set that radius to be a thousand, bearing in mind that our shape is, is a 2000 by 2000. And let's feather it in by something like negative 200. And I'm also going to apply that circular mask to my clouds. So I'm going to Alt or Option drag it onto the clouds there. And that'll give us a sort of a spherical, um, you, you'll see, I, I won't explain it. It'll, it'll be obvious later on why, why we're doing this. Okay, so then I'm going to take my color solid there and I'm going to rotate it through negative 90. And now you can see it's sort of filling in those areas with sort of water. I'm just going to take that color and really majorly desaturate it and I just don't want it to be too sort of too blue. Something like that is going to be good. I'm also going to try to create the impression of some little texture on this water, sort of waves. And to do that I'm going to come into the library and I'm going to add a cellular above the clouds there. Come over and Let's just set its speed down to 0.1 and let's set its blend mode to screen. Let's reset its transform and let's have a X rotation of negative 90. We need to set it up to be 2000 by 2000. And we're also going to just apply that circular mask to it. So Alt drag it onto the cellular as well. And Let's just take that and bring its opacity way down to around 10. And it just gives us a little bit of a hint of something extra so that's not completely flat. Let's also bring in an asset. 
So I'm going to import this thing called Huge Sky. Bring that in, and let's come over to its transform. Set its scale to 275, its Y position to 2000, and its Z position to negative 1500. Sit it way back in the distance there. Turn off the grid so you can see what this is looking like. So now we've got sky in the background like that. Another thing I'd like to do to the environment is I'm going to take this clouds, which is the master clouds, and I'm going to Alt or Option drag it into that background group there. And I'm going to remove all of those effects, but leave the mask. And we're going to come over and reset its transform like that, set its blend mode to screen, and set its X rotation to negative 90, and its Y position to 50. And what this is going to do is create some cloud action around the mountains, which is actually a rather nice effect. My original plan actually was to invert this. So come to the gradient for that and just hit that switch there. So now we have the clouds sort of in the water area. Actually, I think that's pretty good. But either way, you could, you could, you could decide that you quite like that or you could have that. So I'm going to go with that, I think, and I'm going to reduce that opacity down to around 20, I think. So then what I'm going to do is add some lighting to the scene. So I'm going to come to Object Light. Let's set its intensity to 200 and its fall off to 1. And then let's come over and adjust its position. So in this case, I want to keyframe it. So I'm going to come to the beginning and I'm going to keyframe the Y and Z. So the Y value is going to be 50 and the Z value is going to be negative 1000. So you can see we've got it right over there on the horizon. And then I'm going to come to the end and we're going to set that Y value to 250 and the Z value to 500. So then overall it's going to be like the sort of the light coming across the terrain and, and, and lighting everything up. So I'm just going to add a couple more lights. So the first one, add object light. We're going to set its intensity to 500. Come over to its position and set the X position to negative 1000, the Y position to 200, and the Z position to negative 500. It's going to be off in the distance there. And then what we also want to do is we want to keyframe its intensity. So we'll come to the end and keyframe that value of 500, come to the beginning and keyframe it down to zero. So we just we get this sort of lightening up on the horizon as the scene progresses. And now we can just duplicate that light and move it over to the right hand side with a value of positive 1000 on X. And finally, let's also keyframe the intensity of that original light. So let's come to the end and keyframe that 200% value and come to the beginning and set that down to zero. So now we effectively kind of have a dawn out of nothing. Light comes up like that. Light sort of creeps across the terrain. And for an extra bit of drama, we can take this group that contains all the sort of background elements in it and we can add color hue saturation and we can keyframe this value. So let's come to the end there and set that keyframe value of one and then come to the start and set that value down to 0.5. And this will give us just a slightly more sort of moody beginning like that. It'll keep those, those sort of that water down a little bit darker, a little bit more dramatic than it might otherwise have been. So just a couple of final tweaks, one of which is this clouds here that, that is creating the actual clouds. I, I'm not happy with the fact that we can see the rim around the, the back of the world there. So what I'm going to do is take its mask and increase that feather quite a lot. I think I'm going to go for 750 and then that just sort of um, fades off a little bit more. And the other thing we could do is to actually, instead of just using this blue colour solid for the water, we could use our, a sky image because the sky should be reflected in the water. So what we could do is take our huge sky and duplicate it, right click duplicate, 
and we could zero out its y and z positions like that, set its x rotation to negative 90, and then all we need to do is add an image mask to it, so right click, add image mask, and we can use that color solid as the mask. And so now that looks like that. So I turn that water back on a second, I can show you. Instead of that sort of blue color solid, we've got this more realistic reflection of the actual sky. And so just before we go, I'd like to point out that there are a number of different ways in which you can control this whole contour. And as you saw when we came into the, the master clouds here, this, this one here, we could adjust the gradient. So depending on where we were setting this middle, for example, you know, we were getting more of a plateau at the sea level. And with this, we can reduce the, the area of water, for example. But we can also adjust the overall contour by coming into the threshold, the animated threshold. So let's look at that in the keyframe editor. So for example, if we set these to be uh, interpolation Bezier rather than linear, you see that's a different effect, and we can adjust these handles, and we get sort of different contours on the on the ridges and so on. And you could even add sort of a keyframe in the middle like that and move that around. So you've got quite a bit of control over the actual contour with these various different options. And one final, final thing you can play with, and that's to come to the replicator and apply stylize extrude set the angle to 270 and the distance to say five or something. And you can see what that's done. If I, I need to come to the end here where the lighting is um, full on, it's actually filled in the contours. So they're no, no longer sort of see-through. We would obviously then have to adjust the, the lighting to fill in the foreground. So we could add a light just, you know, to, to, to fill in like so. And, uh, you know, that's, that's a kind of different thing and well worth playing with. Um, because it kind of gives you a, a different sort of look altogether and some interesting possibilities. So see how you get on with that as well. And just one final note for when you cut, try to come and render this scene. Uh, you'll see that in the background here, I don't know whether you, if I sort of zoom in, that we've got a mess of very noisy pixels in the back there. And there's a thing we can do to fix this that will also actually, I think, add to the effectiveness of this scene. And that's to take this master clouds and progressively blur it. And we can do that progressive blur using filters, blur, gradient blur. And let me just set that up. We want zero for the X point one. We want negative 540 for the Y point one, zero there for the X. And here we want positive 1000. And I think I might just go for a value of something like seven. And what that does, if I turn that on and off, you can see it's kept our foreground fairly sharp, but progressively as we go back in the scene, it all gets a little bit more blurred. And not only is that actually quite a nice effect in terms of the look, it also means we overcome that problem of those that noisy bunch of, of pixels at the back that we will always otherwise have. So that's really pretty much it. As I say at the beginning, it's it's not about creating a realistic terrain, but you know, this is this is definitely something you could you could use, play with, develop in other directions. And I think it's quite an interesting technique. So thanks very much indeed for watching. If you like this uh, tutorial, please do hit the subscribe button. And if you like it a lot, I would also be very grateful if you would consider becoming a Patreon subscriber. And there are details of that in the description. And of course, a very big thank you to those of you who have done so already.